Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, I want to share with you the two most dangerous foods that you can consume. Now, you probably are thinking it's sugar-related or junk food, but actually it is corn and soy. Yeah. Did you realize that corn and soy makes up 50% of the crops that are grown in the U.S.? Yeah. It's incredible. An average person consumes 70, 700 calories of their diet of these two so-called healthy vegetables. So corn and soy make up 40% of your diet. That's incredible. 93% of all the soy grown in the U.S. is GMO. 85% of all the corn grown in the U.S. is GMO. So what is GMO? It's an alteration of the, the food. It's an alteration, in this case, it's a resistant to a certain uh, herbicide called, which is a weed killer called Roundup Ready or glyphosate. So in other words, when they grow corn and soy, you can spray this with this herbicide and they won't die. All the weeds die, but they don't die. Okay? So you're getting a lot more of this chemical. So what are the dangers? Well, there's been some suppressed studies, independent studies, not by Monsanto, who actually owns this, this technology, and they found that it causes some serious problems in animals, okay, animal studies, because who wants to do on human studies? Um, we're doing a human study now with, with, in your diet, but the point is that uh, in animal studies, they found that it cr creates all sorts of cancers of the breast, of the liver, of the kidney, of the uterus, okay, of the ovaries. Yeah, I know. So the problem is that the World Health Organization only requires um, you to do studies for 90 days, three months, okay? And if you pass the 90-day mark or actually you get through it, it's considered safe. Yeah. Well, right now there's class action suits. I don't know how far it's going to go because Obama passed a law in the middle of the night, of course, that states that if Monsanto gets in trouble, um, well, they can't sue them, basically. So they're not going to really get in trouble because there's a law that protects them, unfortunately. Um, and I'll put the link down below. You can check it out. But here's the data on glyphosate. There's a lot of unknowns right now, but in the last 15 years, there's been a 3,000 increase in exposure to this darn pesticide. Okay, and this, I'm sorry, this herbicide. And this herbicide creates alterations in your endocrine system. It's considered an endocrine disruptor, and it acts like estrogen. And that's why it creates a lot of cancer and other, problem, other problems as well, allergies, probably autism and all sorts of things. Okay, so I just want to show you something. Let's take a look at some of the hidden foods, okay? What about ketchup, high fructose corn syrup? What about all the dressings with the soy oils and the corn oils? Um, here's some hidden um, corn products. Citric acid, that's actually in vitamin C. Uh, confection sugar, corn flour, corn fructose, corn meal, corn chips, corn syrup, dextrin, dextrose, fructose, high fructose corn syrup, lactic acid, malt monodiglycerides, MSG, monosodium glutamate, sorbitol, starch, baking powders, and many synthetic vitamins. Okay, that's, that's in corn. Now in soy, bulking agents, carob, emulsifiers, gargum, natural flavors, soy beverages, all the weight, like a lot of the weight loss programs have soy, um, isolated protein type um, powders, incredible. Textured vegetable protein, vegetable broth, I, um, diet foods. I mean, there's over 3,000 foods that have corn and soy, okay? So the problem is we're in an experiment right now. We can't even know what we're eating. We're getting exposed to it. It's hard to avoid it. So you're going to have to do three things, okay? Number one, you're going to have to try to avoid this. Start reading labels. Okay, you're going to have to avoid. I put a link down below that you can print out some hidden foods that you need to start becoming aware of to avoid as much soy and corn as possible. And tell your friends, your family, and just make sure they don't consume it, especially if you're at risk for breast cancer or any type of cancer. I mean, we're all at risk, right? Um, number two, make sure as much as possible you start eating organic. Why? Because if it's organic, corn or soy, then that means it's not GMO. Okay, so that's one way. So number three, 
you're going to have to start consuming foods that deactivate some of these, I call them poisons, in your liver. Okay, And so what you can do with that is you start consuming a little bit of cruciferous in the diet. Kale, broccoli, br Brussels sprouts, things like that. That will slowly start to protect you because those are anti-cancer foods, anti-estrogenic foods. Okay, So number one, avoid it. Number two, get organic. Number three, eat cruciferous foods that will deactivate some of the stuff in the liver. Okay. All right. So on that note, on that fun note, um, go ahead and leave your comments below and I will see you in the next video. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan. Okay. If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.